This video might be totally boring, but I guess I always think that. Today I want to look at three terminals. Three old world terminals. I have a stack of notes, probably several inches thick, of topics that I want to explore. Things that I have saved, and I never go through them. Or at least very seldom do I go through them. Today, I just stuck my hand in the pile and pulled out a piece of paper. Not sure when I wrote this down, but on this piece of paper was three terminals. So, in advance, I've pulled up these three terminals, and we'll have a little look. If you like good coffee, check out my blend on Amazon. And I also wanted to plug my box set that includes my first 173 videos in a nice wooden USB drive. Besides that, thanks for being here, and welcome. So here we are, three terminals. Sometimes I get a little tip, but today I have nothing. I like to use a format sometimes when I'm not sure what I'm gonna say about something, but I find it really interesting, and I'll share that with you. The first part is, what do we see? What do we see with our own eyes? With no preconceived ideas, without passing any judgment, or coming to any conclusions. What do we see? And the next part is, what do they say? They being the writers of history. What a great first place to start. What do they say? And finally, after exhausting the first two options, we ask ourselves, what can we conclude? And now we may pass some sort of judgment with this foundation. So here we can see the Cincinnati Union Terminal. Just a mind blower, and for me personally, inspiring a sense of awe and wonderment. Being my first clue that it's from the old world. Even though it looks stripped down and simplified, just the enormous size, and from an economic perspective, a waste of space. And as we know, the old world was not concerned with economies, somehow. And I believe they tell us this is the largest dome. Not sure if it's the worlds or the nations, but nonetheless, winning some prize, unofficially, recognition, more appropriately, of the largest dome of some sort. And we'll give them that. Just massive. Looks like it's been painted, now complete with a Starbucks. And again, you can see the absolute waste of resources if economies played any part in anything. Really seeming more appropriate as a giant greenhouse, just blasting light in here. And this is how you would build a greenhouse. You would want to put the windows on the south side. How about some black and white photos? Here we go in times of old. Always nice to see what it used to look like. A beautiful fountain. Here a construction photo, maybe. And here we go. We can see some facading that has perhaps been removed. And very strange. Very, very strange blotchiness on this image. And we can see just how bustling this station really was in this time period. The time period emphasized by these vehicles here. Really seeming important to have a terminal this large. And it looks pretty old and weathered. This should be very new construction at this point. Let's have a little look at it from above. Looking like any glorious old world layout. And in this picture, they haven't erased the old world completely. These fountains probably continued spilling into landscaping and fountains and all the glory of the old world. And what do they say? The Cincinnati Union Terminal Company was created in 1927 to replace five local stations used by seven railroads. Construction lasted from 1928 to 1933. 
five years, and within this five years was also included the creation of viaducts, mail and express buildings, and utility structures, being a power plant, water treatment facility, and roundhouse. Here is a look at a roundhouse. A place for servicing and storing locomotives. Five years. Initially underused, the terminal saw traffic grow through World War II, then decline over the following four decades. Always the story, unneeded. The terminal was slow and continued to suffer a decline. Why then did they build it? like this and is a terminal really a terminal especially if it's unneeded what they were anticipating that it would be busy it was initially underused several attractions were mounted over the years to supplement declining revenues are you kidding me they needed attractions who cares you either need the terminal or you don't nobody wants to hang out at the terminal you don't need attractions nobody wants to linger at such places they want to depart Train service fully stopped in 1972. There you go. For 50 years, they dinked around, didn't know what the hell to do with it, tried bolstering attendance by implementing attractions, and finally, train service fully stops in 1972. An Amtrak moved to a smaller station nearby. There you go. So really, does this make sense to you? Again, I approach this with an open mind. Now we're told it was built in five years. Traffic was slow and continues to decline right from the get-go until they shut it down 50 years later. Does this really seem likely? Or does it seem more likely that this building was here? Now I know we saw some photos of construction, but I'm not basing my conclusions on these construction photos. I'm basing them on this ridiculous and stupid story. Let me know your thoughts. Next. Next we have the Mumbai India Terminal. Still standing and still looking very original in its glory. All the antiquitech still remaining. Just looking crazy and mind-blowing. Look at all this pointiness shooting in all directions. Super tech. And I believe everything was teched out in this same fashion. Every building in every country. And here in India, there's so much craziness, and I mean that in a good way, that there is no need for them to bastardize these buildings. No, they fit right in, even though this is what we would call a classic Tartarian structure. And let's have a little look in black and white. Boom. And I was wrong. It was even more glorious in the past. Wow. So here we go. This is what we see. If you were just to teleport me to this spot in time and ask me, where are you? I would say some grand palace or cathedral or something of the likes in which I can't even imagine. This is absolutely mind-blowing in every way, way over the top. And look at this. Look at this display of people. La -di da on their mud roads, just scraping by, just barely existing. And then this? What? Who gives a damn about a terminal station when you have means like this? This is your mode of travel. Should not the mode of travel match the terminus building? Is this not a little much for a central hub in India? For these people? Come on. How many stories do you need? One floor. One hundredth of this bottom floor would be perfectly, perfectly adequate. Maybe just this little section right here would be a fine terminus hub for these people. A little trough with water, perhaps, for these horses. Maybe some concessions over on this side. And a little ticket booth somewhere in here. Perfectly adequate. But no. We need one more floor, two more floors, three more floors, with rose windows, and probably just these little bits of tech all over the building would cost more money than any of these people would have in an entire lifetime, all put together. 
Again, I'm ranting, but the building does not match the people and modes of transportation or lifestyle. These people do not belong here. And here's a drinking fountain in Mumbai. Amazing. So what do they say? The terminus was designed by a British-born architectural engineer, Frederick Stevens. In an exuberant Italian Gothic style, its construction began in 1878 and was completed in 1887. Nine years. Nine sweet, smooth sailing years to build this wonder. Hallelujah. The design has been compared to the St. Pancras Railway Station in London. Yes, again, no doubt the same builders, but not the work of this man. The style is also similar to other buildings in Bombay, such as the Elphinstone College, but especially the buildings of Bombay University. And here we can have a little look at that. The station took 10 years to complete, the longest for any building of that era in Bombay. Yes, typically things like this can be built in one year in this era, according to the narrative. Including Fort Jefferson, slapping together 16 million bricks in one year. Here's a little look in 1910. So this is already 40 years after its supposed construction. 40 years after its construction. Does this look like it was built 40 years before this photo? It looks so old. And again, for what? What are we needing a terminus hub for anyway? And here's a great picture, really a great picture, and giving you a feel for life in this time period. I don't know, maybe I'm just not seeing it. Maybe this is absolutely a terminal station in the most, as a matter of fact, kind of way. Or maybe this is a machine. Nobody needs this building to be what it is. Not in the time period that we find ourselves in, or within the last couple hundred years. And one more terminal station. This is the Birmingham, Alabama terminal. Right off the get-go, a beautiful, mind-blowing terminal, initially seeming like it could be anything. A cathedral, a palace, inspiring awe and wonderment. In this old pic, or painting, we can see an underground portal. Let's have a little look from above. Very impressive. And just looking like tech. When one looks at this, the symmetry, the balance. We see a machine. We see devices pointing upwards that have nothing to do with a ground terminus. Unless the builders were just wasteful or extravagant, we wouldn't build a terminal hub this way. If you needed a tower, one tower would suffice. And here a look, seeming like some 1960s or 70s vehicles. Why don't we have a color photograph? And if this was a color photograph, this thing is in ruins by the mid-60s. Absolute ruins, mid-60s, judging by these vehicles here. Again, we have not even begun to look at what they say. We're still examining the terminal with a certain neutrality. Here, a little look at the excessive interior. Not much action at all. Why? And here, again, not only does the situation not match the architecture, being that it's not busy, but these rather unornamental benches do not match the architecture. Similar to what they would do in a church, an inherited church, just throw some rows of seating in a building that does not match the seating. If you were going to build in this fashion, if you had so much care and concern about every detail, surely you would have more care and concern about the seating. Seating would be just as beautiful as the building itself, and we don't see that in thousands of cathedrals and terminal stations as seen here. A complete disconnect with the function and the form. And here, let's have a little bird's eye look. And look at the condition of the city, just to show you 
What necessity for such luxury. The city is in ruins, look at this. In this early time period, in ruins. And this is about 1960s. Judging by these vehicles, these are 1960s vehicles. And they're really pushing it. Showing us these black and white photos when we should have color emerging. Here we have an old color 1960s photo. And the things in ruins. They tell us 112 years ago the first train arrived at the Birmingham station. Here we go. Houses right up to the edge of it. And what do they say already? The Birmingham station was completed in 1909. It was the principal railway station for Birmingham, Alabama. Until the 1950s. There we go again. 40 years. 40 years! This glory was unsuitable and had to be demolished in 1969. And you see, I wasn't expecting anything today. And yet so much has been dished out simply by examining and asking these three questions as I started with. What do we see? What do they say? And what can we conclude? And no wonder it looked like it was in ruins in the 60s. Because it was. And they were just about to demolish it. This couldn't have been anything else. They didn't need a library or a homeless shelter. Who tears down buildings like this? In my opinion, the victors of the end of an era. Tearing down wonders like this is the behavior of inheritors who have no appreciation for the works of the past and who even want to tear down the symbols of the past just as people tear down statues in their local areas when there's revolutions. This is what we have seen with our inheritance of this realm. The controllers and those in power still to this day are systematically erasing the past. And so much of it was done before anybody cared. And I feel blessed that our small community has grabbed a hold of what's left and made some kind of sense of it. So I think that's it. I thank you all for joining me today. Again, check out my coffee if you enjoy the best of the best. I send my love to all of you, and I'll see you next week. And this was just shared with me. This is absolutely an amazing picture of Mexico. And what we see is a ziggurat type structure and an aqueduct. And the aqueduct seems to slam into the ground here, seeming to be buried. And then we have another ziggurat over here, maybe a mile apart from one another. And with such a sight, I could only imagine there's a lot more around here. And this was just shared with me in a comment. I thank you for this. And considering the aqueduct is buried, I'm almost positive there's a lot more buried out here. And here it looks like she's still standing. All of it. Or at least another one. And very interesting the way it has the center part poking out. And somebody else had suggested that Nimrod's temple could be the Tower of Babel. And really a fascinating picture here. Clearly absolute ruins. And there was much more going on up here at one point. Somebody had commented that... Mont Saint-Michel in France here is also very Babelesque, and this is absolutely remarkable. It's hard to say where castle and cathedral meet land. Is there any land? And here somebody wanted me to look at the islands in or around Croatia, and these islands have fingerprints on them, and a very strange fingerprint and very print-like, and I don't really think it's a fingerprint, but I do think it's a very, very advanced remains of a past civilization. What exactly? I don't know, but they covered their whole island with what we would be told perhaps are walls, similar to Native American ruins we see, just the remains of walls. And I'm kind of out of words, really, on this one. Just remarkable. Here's a closer look at what we would see on the ground. And just the most weathered remains. I'm absolutely positive these would have been walls and finished at one point. Especially with how straight and precise 
all the lines are. And this is so serious. These are such serious ruins. Here's another island, shaped like a fish. And it has these wall ruins. And another one, I think. So what story would they give us? Must I look into every little thing? Have I not said I don't know enough? Is it not enough to say I don't know and move on? After I publish this video, I might be told this is the work of an artist, of course. But I'll take my chances and we'll move on. Here somebody shared the Nova Constellation coin and it looks like there's many versions of it, many different mintings. And here we see the J783. I'll zoom in a little. Really seeming like a J. And everything really seeming as it was meant to be. The seven having a little notch as to not confuse it with a one. The eight, clearly an eight. The three, a beautiful three. Notched, seldom seen. And the last thing I wanted to show in this little bonus is the book of Psalms 97 5. And this is where we get the quote, the mountains melted like wax at the presence of the Lord. And if a mountain could melt, so could everything else. The buildings, the rocks, all life. 